Wonderful. Oliver, thanks a lot for your very British introduction uh, and uh, giving me the, all the blame for people being scared about climate change, but rightly so. Uh, actually, this is a slide which I used as the cover slide in the presentation I gave in Katowice, one of the past climate conventions, uh, COPs in 2018 and the title is precisely climate impacts it's the non-linearities to it actually yeah? and this is as a mathematical physicist i have tried to preach all my scientific life that we cannot linearize the complex world around us we have to really deal about the disruptions and so on so in that very year just before that katowice event we had um we had, uh, let me see if I can move it, yes, here. Uh, we had uh, the report, the 1.5 degrees centigrade report by the IPCC, global warming of 1.5 degrees. And this actually was driving home the message that uh, dangerous climate change is just around the corner. So the tipping elements or the tipping points concept is actually, and that's a broad conclusion, helps us to, number one, define in scientific terms, what is dangerous climatic change? That means this is operationalizing the famous Article 2 of the Climate Convention, so that's number one, and I will show how that happens. And the second, maybe even more important question is, how far are we away? from dangerous climate change. Yeah? And the overall story of tipping points is too big to be told in a few minutes. Uh, it has made a world career in a way, and initially nobody thought of that. But in the IPCC report, you have the following presentation here, the slide uh, uh, chart, which is actually giving you the creeps uh, because it means uh, we introduced in the third assessment report of the IPCC uh, this notion of large scale singular events that's on the right hand side, but in general, the reasons for concern, uh, a sort of colorful way of presenting our approach to dangerous climatic change that has become world famous, uh, although it was a very slight innovation at that time. But what you see if you focus on the right hand side is that when we first used this colorful presentation of how close are we actually to something which is really, really worrying. So you see in the TAR third assessment report in 2001, when we talked about large scale singular events like the breakdown of the thermal line circulation or the shift of the monsoon system, we thought, well, this would become dangerous around four degrees warming. You see the yellow color there. And then, yes, it would be really, really serious at six degrees warming. That means more or less never because nobody was expecting that this would ever happen. Now you go along the line. So where has been this paper in PNAS by Smith and Al, when you have the AR5 fifth assessment report, the color is coming down and it's quite dramatic, Kali coming down at the special report on <clears throat> 115 degrees. But you see, this has been corroborated by many, many publications now, that between one and two degrees, you enter already the danger zone, which means we are just half a degree centigrade away from dangerous climate change. So the next slide is a slide which I presented in a slightly different form a long time ago, actually in the year 2001, at a lecture I gave at uh, Oxford University, uh, tipping elements in the Earth system. So what are the vital organs of the planetary machinery and how could they be disrupted? So you see, of course, the big ecosystems, you see the thermal line circulation in the Atlantic, you see the jet stream, another circulation pattern, and you see the, the ice sheets, of course. Huh? 
And at that time, we thought most of these elements would never be touched by human interference, in particular, East Antarctic ice sheet. I mean, even if, when I talked at the time to the British Antarctic Survey, they said, calm down, this will never be perturbed, so to speak, by anthropogenic global warming. But the story has changed a lot, actually. Now we are quite nervous about it. This is the iconic example of hermaline circulation. There have been hundreds of papers on that. This is a recent paper published uh, as a brief communication, uh, I think in Nature Geoscience here, yeah, right? And it's telling us that actually we have a, a clear cut uh, sort of weakening of the, of the hermaline circulation or Gulf Stream. And if there is a further weakening of about 40%, the system may be tipped actually into a shutdown, into a lockdown of the thermaline circulation with major implications for, for example, weather conditions in Europe. So this is a chart that actually tells you precisely where is the danger zone and how far are we away from it. And why is the Paris Agreement so reasonable? So that's a paper we published in 2016. Uh, uh, myself, uh, Ricardo Winkelmann, Stefan Ramsdorf in Nature Climatic Change. And it's telling you all the story. So uh, you see the time frame is from 20,000 years before our, uh, our period to the year 2500. You see the various RCP scenarios where we would take us actually in terms of, of temperature. So RCP 8.5 by the year 2500 could take us to more than eight degrees warming. So that would be complete disaster. But also the other ones would have take us far outside the Holocene conditions. Huh? And you see the Paris range, the corridor 1.5 to 2 degrees as a, as a gray bar, so to speak, horizontal bar. And when you see at that time, four years ago, five years ago, our best guess based on the various literature entries where the various tipping sort of uh, bars are, where the corridors are. So you have on the left-hand side, the West Antarctic ice sheet, where some parts have been tipped already. Greenland, yeah, it can start at 1.5 degrees, but probably rather at three degrees warming. But very sadly, the coral reefs, uh, 1.5 degrees is already starting the demise. And when you see all the other tipping elements, Amazonian rainforest, boreal forest, permaline circulation, just discussed, Enzo, and finally the East Antarctic ice sheet. And the clear story is by the way the weekly line is uh, measured, uh, global mean temperature since uh, 20,000 years ago. The sad but clear cut story is the following. The Paris range, the Paris agreement serves as a firewall separating us from some of the worst tipping dynamics like the meltdown of the East Antarctic ice sheet, which would add 40 or 50 meter sea level. Uh, to, to sea level, but some of the elements, in particular the West Antarctic ice sheet and the coral reefs, we are approaching them or we have already destabilized parts of them. So that's the chart. So all the Paris Agreement can do, if it is implemented at all, it can separate us from the worst tipping dynamics that are in store. But even worse, uh, a paper lead offered by Will Steffen, but many of the people here on this call, Tim Lenton and Oran Rockspring and Jonathan Gongas and so on, uh, that paper became iconic in a way, trajectories of the Earth system in the Anthropocene, which tells us two things actually, which add up to the worries about uh, tipping points is that there might be an interaction or there will be an interaction of the various tipping dynamics so if you melt down the Greenland ice sheet, when of course this has a major implication on the thermal line circulation, and this is changing the weather conditions in the Amazonian basin and so on. So there are cascades of interactions really. And the second thing is that, and this is a really worrying thing, if we 
emit just enough uh, CO2, for example, to push the Earth to two degrees warming and then stop emitting, do we have any guarantee that the Earth system keeps is stays put at the two degrees warming? Huh? Or whether we have put it on a slippery slope where after centuries it will just glide away into four degrees, six degrees warming into a hot house state. And this question has not been answered yet, actually. We just assume the Earth system will stay put with two degrees warming. So all these things have to be discussed. So finally, um, how far are we uh, away and can we still intervene? And this was a, an article published in, in, in uh, The Guardian on a little math we have introduced in a paper, actually, that was this paper here in Nature, published in November 2019, Climate Tipping Points to Risky to Bet Against. But I'm coming back to this. We introduced a little bit of math in order to try to define what a climate emergency is. Huh? And of course, we use the usual risk analysis as insurers use. Risk is the damage multiplied by the event probability. And if the damage is very big, and if the event probability is very small, you still have a considerable risk. If P, uh, is one when you have certainty, so the damage will occur. But when you look at the different uh, kin, so to speak, controllers in a, in a tower at an airport, they have a different definition of urgency, or we have a definition of urgency, namely, it's the reaction time still left if two planes are on a collision course with each other. So it's the reaction time still left to communicate with the pilots. So we can change course, divide it, uh, uh, excuse me. So the reaction time is the time left. You can end uh, the intervention time. So to get it right, because everybody gets puzzled. So the reaction time is the time you need in order to avoid a collision. So to send the message to the pilots and so on. The intervention time is the time you still have actually for uh, sending the signal and to turn around the system. Uh, and so in the Titanic case, it is said that about a minute left and the captain did nothing to react. So he lost control immediately. And you see here, if the, if the reaction time and the intervention time become equal, you have lost control. This can be applied. We can actually play around with it to climate change. And given the tipping points we have in store, actually, we have still an intervention time of probably 30 years, but the reaction time is similar, actually. So we are about to lose control right now. So this was said already. The big hope is now the following. If there is nonlinearity, in the biogeophysical system, the tipping dynamics, we can only beat this nonlinearity with the nonlinearity in the social system. As you heard, if we have 30 years to turn the tide, some disruptive innovations and some social movements have to start, which actually beat in the end the physical nonlinearity. This is precisely what Ilona Otto and others have raised in a paper which I guess will become famous, Social Tipping Dynamics for Stabilizing Earth's Climate by 2015, which was published last year in PNS. So that's my introduction. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the contributions by the colleagues. Thanks for your attention.